Hi, this is Laura Lee Collet in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I'm going to share a quick and simple card with you today. If you'd like to get in touch with me, you can reach me at stampinlaura.stampinup.net. Okay, today I'm going to show you how to make a card with one of our beautiful sets that is retiring. It's called Painted Glass. It has some really nice sentiments. It's got a, a, some stamped uh, images that you can color in. And it also has dies that go with it called stained glass, which you can cut these out and just make beautiful cards. And today I'm gonna to be using this one that kind of looks like a ladder. I know it is a stained glass, but anyway. That's the one we're gonna use. And I'm also using this paper that will also be retiring, and it's called Best Dressed. It comes cut six by six, and um, I'm not sure if you know this about all our paper, it's double-sided, and it, they list all the colors down here that, um, that go within the set. So, um, this is most often where I get my inspirations for colors and uh, what goes good together and what looks nice. So that's what I'm going to use today. Now, these cards are almost identical. On this one, I cut out the window, threaded some of this gorgeous pink organ, petal pink organdy ribbon through it that is not retiring. Woohoo! And um, I made this one, the uh, mint macaron green is a little bit wider than on this one, but I decided on this card, I would pop it up and I would add a bow. So I don't know which one you like the best. I vote for the bow, but a lot of people can't make bows or, or it takes them a long time, they get frustrated. So I just put a simple knot there. And if you want to, you can put the legs glue them down. But let me show you how to make this little card. I cut a full sheet in half so that it measures five and a half by eight and a half. And I scored it at one and a at four and a quarter inches. I'm gonna fold that back, take my bone folder and just give that nice edge a uh, crease there. Next, I have my mint macaron, which I cut at three and three quarters by five, so that it'll give a nice border around. The other one, I only cut off a quarter of an inch. So it's just, you know, I do things different, different days. The uh, DSP or designer paper, <clears throat> is cut at one and three quarters inch by six. And remember I told you that it's all cut six by six. So you only have one cut there. So the first thing I wanna do is go ahead and do my stamping. I wanted a birthday card and I'm only using one color of ink. And I thought that black would be too bold for this. So I'm going with our basic gray. Our Ink pads open like a compact and slide back. They're a little stiff in the beginning, but the more you use them, the easier it gets to open and close. And I'm going to ink up my stamp, make sure it's inked up well. And I'm gonna put this in the upper left-hand corner. And there you go. I'm gonna close my ink pad so I don't get my fingers in it. Next, I'm gonna set that aside and I'm gonna bring out my Big Shot. Now the Big Shot, we don't sell this at the moment, um, but if you do have a Big Shot or haven't used it in a while, remember there, some, if you got the magnetic plate, it works really well. And I'm gonna put that down and I'm gonna take my little piece of 
my die and I'm going to set it right there in the middle. Now, uh, where did I put my little, here are my little blue tapes, just to keep it from wiggling. If you have a stamped image and you're cutting out around it, you want to be sure to use some tape or something just to make sure it doesn't uh, wiggle as it goes through the big shot. Set this back over here. Take my paper out of my die. And this one comes out really easily. You have some little things here that I think would make a, an adorable little flower if you wanted to use those. And then if you just get it started, it comes out very easily. Uh-huh. If you just get it started, it comes out. There we go, okay. Now, if there are any little pieces of debris or leftover cardstock, they're gonna come out real easily on this one, or you can just take your pokey tool and poke them out. like so. Then we got these little triangles here. I want to make sure all of it's done. Okay. A couple here. Should have brought my dye brush and I didn't think about that. Oops. Okay. Now, now, what I'm going to do here, and this one is just about right for that. So I'm going to take my uh, Petal Pink Ribbon, and I'm going to start, I'm going to go every two, either over or under and over all the way to the end. So I got a little pattern going here. And when I get to the end, I'm gonna leave just a little bit so that it can go behind the card. So let me clip this off. And it's going to go like so. Now, I'm also going to use some Tombow adhesive. And with this adhesive, you can do a little puddle somewhere where you're not going to get your paper in it. And I need to be doing this on my silicone mat, which is right here. So let me do that. Now, I took a, a little piece of our stamping sponge, a little dab of the um, liquid purpose glue, and I'm just dabbing it. Just so, sometimes it's so hard to get adhesive on little skinny, tiny things. So that's a good trick. Now, I'm gonna put this out of the way. And I'm gonna place that so that I have a pretty even border between here and here. Now, see that adheres real nicely. Now, the other thing I'm gonna do because this is um, going to be popped up and I'm not going to have snail adhesive around here, I'm going to use some of my tearing tape. Just right there to catch that ribbon good. 
Now this is um, pretty strong. It's not forgiving, so wherever you place it, it's gonna stay, which is good and bad. If you put it in the wrong place, you're stuck. And then if you just burnish the edge a little bit, that should come right up. I'll do it on this side. Okay, so now that'll hold your ribbon. Now, so there you go. Now, if you don't have a big shot, you can just use this with this gorgeous ribbon over it and it would still be a beautiful card. So that's an alternative to this one. Now, I wanted to put a bow. So I'm gonna put about, since it's gonna be small, I'm gonna do about 16 inches. As I've pointed out before, sometimes we tend to try to save our ribbon, and I, I do think that, you know, you shouldn't be wasteful. But at the same time, give yourself a little lanyap so that you're, it doesn't frustrate you. Okay, so I'm pulling that through. And this is a personal trick of mine. Every time I tie a ribbon like this, the legs go up. So I turn mine upside down. And on one side, the side that's gonna make the loop around, I give a, a little more ribbon. I hope y'all are seeing this there. So I'm gonna go around and then I'm gonna make a bunny ear, go around with this one, make my second bunny ear or loop and pull it tight. Now, that's too big, so just keep playing with it until you get it the size you want it. And I think that was perfect for this card. So let's see. Okay, I think that's about right. And I'm gonna Clip that and clip that, and there you have your uh, ribbon tied. Now, I said I was going to pop this up, so I'm going to put dimensionals on the corners and in the middle. And in the middle, that just kind of keeps it from sagging. I don't know that it really would do that, but anyway, it helps. And that's about how many dimensionals I use. So all I'm gonna do is pull that off and make sure I'm not putting it on upside down. Have you ever done that? That's fun. Okay, so now, and I just think that is an elegant, pretty birthday card. And I hope you'll try it if you are wanting to more information about this, it'll be at the end of the video. And I will, um, you can reach me, Stampin' Up, I'm sorry, stampinlaura.stampinup.net. There I have my specials, and you'll be able to see the May host code. But thank you for joining. I hope you'll spread the word, and come back soon. I'll have some more. Thanks.